most famous physical therapist on the internet. Hi folks, I'm Bob Shrub, physical therapist. Brad Heine, physical therapist. Together we are the most famous physical therapist on the internet. Well, in our opinion, of course. Again, Bob. we are honored today, Brad, to have Chris, the pharmacist, with us. Again, we're going to discuss Hi guys. the topic um, of ibuprofen today. Right. Uh, and the good, the bad, the ugly, the dangers, the... Right. I mean, ibuprofen, I think, is probably one of the most commonly used over-the-counter drug, at least in the United States. I have to admit, it's probably the one that I use the most. Right. I mean, they sell in these big jugs. You get, a, you know, a thousand pills in there and see how long you can make it last kind of a thing, you know? <laughs> and, and it actually, I think Chris is going to tell us the actual problems that we, you know, we face as a society with pills like this potential. So they're great healing properties, the pain and all that kind of Promote thing. Promote healing. Promote healing, yes. Right. Uh, but what are the, the things we need to be aware of? That's the big thing. So Chris, once again, pharmacist, where'd you graduate from? Butler University, Where, 1995, where, where Indianapolis. Butler, Indianapolis, yep. excellent. A couple right. of trips to the Final Four a few years back with Brad Stevens, who's yep, now with the that. Celtics. Yep. <laughs> but right. they're doing well this year, just beat number one Villanova, so it's oh, cool. a okay. Right. Excellent. Go Butler. So 20, over 20 years as a pharmacist, a lot of experience, and he's uh, just his mind is like an encyclopedia. You'll find out in just a moment here. It's fun to talk to him and get some information. So ibuprofen, the big picture, what is it? Ibuprofen is an uh, anti-inflammatory under the category of NSAIDs, so it stands for non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drug. Uh, it's kind of a mouthful, but you know, for many of us, uh, when you talk about the good, the bad, and the ugly, I mean, I think it's a go-to choice for many, many people. It's actually my favorite choice for pain reliever as well. Sure. Um, it's, it does a great job. Not only does it relieve pain, but it relieves inflammation. And if you're, you know, with you guys being physical therapists, you know, your patients are going to have pain and inflammation for a variety of different things. Sure. And so it kind of is the jack of all trades kind of medication to really help. I do want to ask you this. I probably use this wrong, but I... Sometimes when I get like an upper respiratory issue, I'll use ibuprofen. Is that ridiculous, or is well, there any help for? I, I think psychologically it helps me. <laughs> well, Go ahead, I, mean, take I it, know I, you, that's you know this is like the layperson coming in and talking to you here on this. If you have a cold, I think you know it would probably be something that I don't think there's any control studies I've ever read. But if you have a cold, you're going to have inflammation. So right. frankly, and if that's you have how a, I looked at it, and if you have inflammation, I suspect you could probably loosely translate that. Yeah, probably it's going to do you some good. I I couldn't speak to any studies i guess i'll have to research that i feel i, I feel better um especially if you're you know like an upper respiratory issue where i'm hammering a fever too if but you feel better yeah. bob you take well, thank you want. well i'll take for the sugar pulls the for sugar fevers pills. it's actually one of your best antipyretics which is things that reduce fevers sure. so this and tylenol but we're, we're going to focus on ibuprofen more but it is good for that is there um, anything in particular you would say ibuprofen is good for as far as your experience of any group categories you know i've used it for everything from surgical recovery to you know aches and pains fever headache you know I mean it's it won't fix your broken heart but I mean <laughs> <laughs> but but the reality of it is is it really can be used for a variety of different aches and pains okay. and so it's very very useful um, what can you want to talk about like what amounts we should right. take? What and, yeah, yeah. yeah, so basically when you look at the instructions on any bottle, it's going to suggest that you may take one or two tablets up to every four to six hours apart. So oftentimes, as long as it doesn't upset your stomach, and that's one of the biggest things with anti-inflammatories, it has interactions with other drugs, which we'll kind of talk to a little bit, but you always want to make sure that it's safe for you. So always check with your pharmacist or your doctor if it's appropriate. And going forward from those steps, if it's safe, uh, one to two tablets every four to six hours apart is the way to go. But you always want to eat before you take this because it can be a little bit rough on the stomach. Uh, again, we'll talk a about full that. meal. Or doesn't have to be a full meal. And ibuprofen, even sometimes people get away with something as simple as a glass of milk. I prefer a piece of toast with some peanut butter, a little yogurt, or just something sure. in the stomach, just so that it helps to buffer and protect. So I've heard of people saying that you know they're taking three or four of these at a time. That's that's pushing the limit. Is that that it? becomes prescriptive type dosing. So from that standpoint, if your doctor is comfortable with it, it's probably more than appropriate to use. But I would just double check with your physician to make sure I, it's yeah, okay. I've had patients who have said that they've come in and the doctor said that they're yeah. giving me, yeah. Yeah, and doctors will oftentimes tell you to take three or four of these every six to sure. eight hours apart. But again, you'd want to do that under your doctor's guidance, right. just to be unsafe to make sure. sure they're not causing stomach issues like ulceration. Uh, and, and, you know, we have to be careful with long-term use too because there are some complications with blood pressure. 
So mm -hmm. we have to be careful because it's, it's how it's metabolized in our body and where it works in the kidney that it can kind of raise blood pressure or lower? Raise blood will. pressure. Okay. So it can actually have some pretty serious cardiovascular events. Now, mm -hmm. I'd like to talk a little more about some of these serious problems that we have in our society with this and how we can get away with it. But before we go on, I just wanted to mention some of our viewers are new to this channel. That's right. And, and if that's the case and you're not aware of subscribing, we have videos like this. We put one out every day and we've got over 900 of them out there now. So subscribe to keep up and with the, the subscribe button is right there yeah. on the screen. Go ahead, so. point, Chris. You got it. Right there. <laughs> right there. <laughs> All right, let's move on. Okay. So we're talking about the, the some it can affect your heart, you said? Correct. How, so how does it well, ibuprofen get to your heart? Well, yeah, ibuprofen, well, when we take it, you know, it goes out through, it doesn't just go to your heart. It doesn't, okay. it goes all over your body and it kind of works through your bloodstream. But the okay. things that, you know, I want to be careful with is what it can do in the kidneys is it can actually make it a little bit rough on the kidneys and how they metabolize things. And so as a result, sometimes, it, you know, when you kind of clog up your kidney, then it makes work harder on the your heart, heart to hard. push blood through because your kidney is a filter. And so basically, you plug up the filter. You plug up the filter. And then the heart yeah, you got any other filter sure. in your house. So it, yeah, Makes so it's, it's something you want to be real careful with. And again, you know, if you have kidney conditions, you want to talk to your doctor about reduced dose or if it's even appropriate for you. Uh, if you have blood pressure issues, if you know short-term versus long-term use is going to be safe and appropriate. Sure. So again, it's it's definitely something you want to work closely with your physician with. Or if you have a quick question, hit up your pharmacist at your local pharmacy, and okay. they'll certainly be able to help you with those. Now I've got a friend. He keeps these with him all the time, and he seems he doesn't take them like two, three, two times a day every day. What's for, he use them for? Him? Well, he has a headache. He takes one, or he has something else, or it, but it, it, he takes it. You know, for years it's like get an ibuprofen out for this or that. Is that kind of usage where it's not? It's not you know ten pills a day or four or five pills a day, but it's. You know, on a week you may take three or four or five on an yeah. average. No yeah. problem with yeah, that. Yeah, I mean you can. Yeah, and I mean I use ibuprofen almost on a daily basis. But again, mm -hmm. I've checked with my doctor and he's comfortable with that. But it, the reality of it is, is that when you have, you know, you never know when you're going to get an ache or a pain or a headache or mm -hmm. a cold or a fever. So it's got a variety of different uses. So yeah, I think it's a great go-to drug. I think it's appropriate to use in the prescribed amounts or which are recommended OTC at that. Okay, point. and as far as your view and from what you see as a pharmacist behind the, the counter and what you read and stuff, what kind of problems do we have in the United States as far as maybe overuse of this? Is that is that something that's yeah, present? Well, yeah, well, I think overuse, I mean, you know, and a lot of, like I think I alluded in the other video that we did, we, you know, a lot of runners call it vitamin I. So, I mean, people take it prevalently. And sure. so it's one of those things that long-term use. Um, the most common thing that we're going to have are GI bleeds or ulcerations. So it's certainly something that we want to be very careful with. So, so this can help. You're not going to take this if you have a GI bleed. It could cause it. It can actually system. cause them. So yeah, it actually erodes away at the, your, your stomach. Not to get too late. Go uh, I'm, I'm going to just go, go off and veer off into a little bit of different direction here. So the, the argument sometimes is that after you've injured a muscle or injured something, you take this but they'll say, well, that's the natural healing process. Why, don't we want it to be inflamed? Don't we want it to be? That is, you know, so. That's true. And so usually it's kind of one of those things where if you have a sprain or a break, the inflammatory cavalcade that occurs, actually, even though it hurts and it causes lots of swelling, is a good thing to promote healing. And there are some orthopedic circles that suggest staying away from anti-inflammatories for at least seven days from that point in time. So, so that is true and certainly something. So, and then, then you have that comfort Right. versus healing battle, which sure. is a real battle. Right. So it kind of comes down to, well, what do we do? Is it ice and elevation and just kind of suck it up? Or do we take something to at least mitigate the pain so that we're comfortable, so we can do our day-to-day -day and improve quality of life? So holistically, if you want to heal, if you could stay away from it, I think it's probably ideal for the first seven days from an acute injury. Uh, particularly a break because it can slow the healing process. Uh, I am not in depth to You're really a fracture say, of a bone, you mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I couldn't take yeah, yeah, to a degree. That's going to be pretty tough. That would yeah. be a question for your doctor to see if they're right. comfortable with that. And they might say, yeah, after seven to 10 days, go ahead. And that's usually what I hear, at least when we have people coming in post surgically or if they've had a pretty bad injury. Sure. I wonder, you know, with a common weightlifter who's trying to, you know, tear down muscle, build it up again. I wonder if that affects that process or not. I, I, you mean on a long-term use? Well, yeah. Or, I mean, let's say every time you, you lift and you get sore, you take ibuprofen. Is that affecting the ability to build muscle? I don't, you know, I don't I know. I think if you went from a pure theoretical standpoint, yes, it probably does. Because, again, that inflammation, that tearing of the muscle tissue, 
is creating growth and development right. for that muscle to get bigger and stronger. Right. So if you take the anti-inflammatory, it probably slows down the process. The, you know, if you probably knew go there was a reason why I wasn't getting the big. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's using too much ibuprofen. That's I hate right. it. I hate uh, it when that happens. Strong like bull, Bob. Uh. <laughs> but I, I think that there are many athletes, uh, average Joes and professionals alike, that probably use this regularly because it helps them get through from day to day sure. to the next event or the think, next exercise. That I think a lot of probably, like you said, the osteoarthritis. I, I, wouldn't you guess? I mean, I'm, I'm assuming that a lot of people take this. Uh, oh, very much so. Yeah. I think so. And it's certainly something that does pay its dividends. So I think it's appropriate to use. And again, with osteoarthritis, that's a chronic condition. That isn't getting any better. Once that genie's come out of the bottle, you're not putting it back. Right. <laughs> so the reality of it is, is what do we do? Well, you we know, can suffer with it or you can try and do something about it. You can go it. to therapy too. We've got some options. <laughs> but that's, we're not going to fix it. Yeah. <laughs> so, but again, I think, you know, as long as your doctor is comfortable with it, you don't have any conditions that prelude, you know, preclude you from using this. Sure. I think it's appropriate to use as long as your doctor is comfortable with the length of time that you have to use it for. And sure. it's not creating new problems. <laughs> All right. Again, All right. our thanks to Chris for coming today. What a great wow. honor. And uh, More than you wanted to know about ibuprofen, yeah, probably. I, I think it's very interesting. <laughs> it is. So. It's very good. Thanks a lot. Thank you.